Greetings in the name of our Father, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and my sisters, again, I greet you this morning, uh, thanking you for joining in and being with us as we lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, we have gotten through this election season, praise be to God, and I know many of you are, are glad about that. Uh, and even prayerfully, um, we're still awaiting the, the final vote count, but we are glad that that situation has been concluded. And now we are preparing to move forward in our land, and we pray that we'll do that with God's speed. Let us go to the Lord in prayer as we prepare for this worship experience. Lord God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you for being all that you said you would be, for keeping us, Lord, through the trial seen and unseen. Oh God, we pray for those who are searching for you right now, Lord, that you would be merciful and kind and allow them to find you. Lord, we pray for those who are lost. Lord, we pray for those who are in the family of God. Lord, we ask that you would, you, you can distinguish between all of us, Lord, for your omniscience allows you that privilege. Lord, we pray, oh God, for our missionaries on foreign fields and even domestically. Oh God, we pray for those who have the anger and hatred of racism in their systems, Lord, that you would fight that with every, with every weapon, Lord, to, 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 to reduce that from the stronghold that it is, Lord. And God, we, we pray for all the churches that are open in thy name, that teach and preach according to your unadulterated word, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would just have mercy on us all, Lord, continue to strengthen and keep us. For we recognize, Lord, that in all things, your will will be done, Lord. So we thank you that we can call on you even in times like this. For those who are ailing, Lord, we pray you stretch forth your healing hand, Lord. We pray for those churches that are floundering, Lord, under this pandemic, Lord. We pray that you will give the wisdom and knowledge to the leadership, Lord, that they may be able to sustain their congregations with a wholesome, spiritually nourished word, Lord, that can feed their souls, Lord, and give them that confidence to step forward and to go on. Oh God, we just thank you. Bless us now as we prepare for our worship experience. Bless the folk at the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, Lord, be with them. And we be so sure to give you all praise, honor, and glory. For it's in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. And we can say amen and amen.
Amen. No other fount I know but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah today. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, our Father, touch us now as we bring forth your word. Let it penetrate the hearts and minds of these your people and let it be nourishment for their souls. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen and amen. We want you to turn with us, if you will, to Galatians, the sixth chapter. Galatians, the sixth chapter. Uh, we want to look at the ninth verse where it says, And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Amen. We shall reap if we faint not. Amen. And I want to talk about the importance of continuing. The importance of continuing. It, it can become very challenging in serving the Lord in a world that becomes progressively distant from faithfulness. Our faith is becoming more blurred daily as we continue in this quarantine mode. There were times when even our Lord became weary and exhausted, for there is the possibility that even he experienced the depression that sometimes come as a result of disappointment. There were probably many times when the Apostle Paul was weary in mind as well as in body. Or are you plagued with chronic fatigue? Are you weary in body and mind? Are you ready to give up the struggle and quit? Even the most faithful will admit that they have been tempted to throw in the towel from time to time. Physical, emotional, and even spiritual fatigue can cause the servants of the Lord Jesus to be tempted to give up the struggle to achieve the will of God in their lives or to see the will of God experienced in the lives of others. As a veteran soldier of the cross, Paul wrote the Galatian Christians to encourage them to continue in well-doing. He promised them that there would be a sure reward at the end of the way if they did not give up, give in, or give out. Constant well-being is the will of God for his children, according to Ephesians 2 and 10, which tells us, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. By its very nature, the spiritual birth, which makes us children of God, creates within us a desire to do the will of God, the desire for evil, is replaced by a desire to do good in accordance with 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, which lets us know that we are a new creation in Christ by the good works of a life dedicated to the glory of God and to the service of our fellow humans. We reveal the difference that Jesus Christ makes. Titus 3 and 8 tells us that if you have believed in God, then devote yourself to good works. Discouragement is the foe of spiritual achievement. Someone has said that the devil used the tool of discouragement more than any other tool to defeat the servants of God. There have been times when each of us has been greatly discouraged. There have been times when each of us has experienced a desire to walk away, to turn our back on our calling. We had legitimate reasons for being discouraged at least in our own minds. There are things within ourselves that can produce discouragement, such as the lack of physical rest and nourishment can produce exhaustion. A body that is not rested and refreshed is much more subject to discouragement than one that is enjoying the vitality of being well rested. The lack of spiritual nurture that comes as a result of genuine worship can cause one to be defeated by discouragement. As the physical body it must be refreshed by food, so even so the soul must be refreshed by the devotional study of God's word. Man cannot live by bread alone, 
Christ says. The soul must be strengthened by communication with God through and in prayer. For God is the source of the vitality of the inward person, the vile source for our souls. Many are experiencing discouragement today due to COVID-19 and are tempted to give up the struggle because of spiritual malnutrition. The struggle of our old fleshly nature against our new spiritual nature can be so intense as to bring about discouragement. We find it much easier to hate than it is to love. We find it much easier to grow weeds in the garden of our lives than we do to grow flowers. Our own personal failure to be what God would have us be can contribute to discouragement. There are many things in the world about us that have a tendency to discourage us. The world with all its evils, with its unchristian attitudes and ambitions and customs, makes it difficult for us to always be what God would have us be. The people we associate with and hold dear can cause discouragement. Satan and all the demons of hell oppose us as we seek to make progress in our own spiritual growth. Every effort to witness for Christ is an offensive effort against the host of evil. But some believers find that there are some in their own family circle who would hinder them and discourage them and cause them to forsake the will of God for their lives. There are many things in the Lord's work itself, which at times contribute toward our being discouraged. There is nothing easy about being genuinely Christian. For it is a rather simple matter to trust Jesus Christ and to become a child of God through faith. But to be genuinely Christian in every area of life requires concentration and can be a constant struggle. We never achieve the ideal of being completely Christian in every area of our lives. I know some folk want to say that they are 100% saved, but truth of the matter is we wrestle with flesh and blood, our own. <laughs> Often we are discouraged by the great variety of opinions that we find among those with whom we worship and fellowship and attempt to cooperate with in the Lord's work. Church folk, <laughs> our brothers and sisters in our very congregations, can sometimes bring about discouragement. Sooner or later, all of us have the breath knocked out of us by someone who has tragically failed to be the Christian he or she professed to be, especially in political as well as religious circles and leadership. The Lord's work is hard work, my brothers and my sisters, requiring struggle and sacrifice to achieve success. We must swim upstream and against the tide if we would do God's will. The continued effort is necessary. While well, Lord always encouraged his disciples to count the cost before they undertook a task. At no time did he deceive them into believing that it would be comfortable and convenient to be one of his followers. The cross itself was the symbol that he lifted up before them. I don't know about you, but the cross could be a discouragement. Paul sought to encourage the Christians of Galatia by the sure and certain promise of a harvest in due season. He encouraged them to be faithful at the task and to leave the results to God. The harvest may not come when we expect it or when we desire it. It may not even come during our lifetime. The great God of heaven is not limited by time as we think of time. But there are instances in which it takes a decade for a seed that we grow in human hearts to germinate and sprout and even come to life. But we must not quit. The devil will not quit trying to defeat us and discourage us. He will not turn from his malicious purpose of destroying the work of God in us and through us. 
The Holy Spirit is not going to quit. The living God is not going to quit loving a lost world. And as a result, we too must not quit. We must keep at the good work of, to which God has called us. And so my brothers and my sisters in closing, it's important to let you know as the NIV translate our text, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. We must continue to be faithful to our Lord and his church. We must continue to give our Christian testimony to those who are outside of the umbrella of God's will, that is the unsaved, family and friends. We must continually try to be genuinely Christian and not follow the popular trends of quasi-Christianity in every area of our lives. God promises to bless our faithfulness. Do you believe him? Do you trust him? That's the question for today. It's extremely important that we continue this fight and not give up. But trust God that he will hear us, that he will energize us, that he will give us the necessary vitality to do the things that are pleasing in his sight. And, 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 and if we do that, if we do that, and do it prayerfully. He promises us that he will, that he will, uh, that he'll be a blessing to us and that it's all for his good. It's all for his cause. It's all for the good of, of, of all mankind. Do you trust him? Is your faith strong enough to hang on even in troubled times like these? Pray that you, you're prayerful about doing the things that are pleasing to him. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All from the peaceful show. I'm going to know this song. I want you to help me to sing this with everything to sing Especially when we get to that part that says, Love. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell me somebody, tell me what your money that lifted you. Tell me what your good looks that lifted you.
lifted us, brothers and sisters. God be with you until we meet again on next week. Praise be to God. If it be according to his holy and righteous will, we look forward to seeing you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.